in much the same way that astronomers always seem to be finding new satellites around planets, they can also find new satellite galaxies around, well, around bigger galaxies. And one of the best candidates for searching is, of course, our great big neighbour, Andromeda. Now, the list of galaxies orbiting Andromeda has increased quite a bit, especially the last 15 years. But three of them have been known about since the 1700s. And two of them are on our beloved Messier catalogue. M110, which we've already covered, and M32, which we're covering now. Galaxies tend not to live in isolation. They tend to actually live in groups. And so, for example, the Andromeda galaxy is a uh, companion to the Milky Way. We're all gravitationally bound to each other. But also, the big galaxies tend to have a sort of little retinue of satellite galaxies around them. So these are the small galaxies that orbit around the big galaxies. And M32 is one of the dwarf galaxies that orbits the Andromeda galaxy. As with many of the objects in his catalogue, he didn't actually discover it himself. The first discovery was a guy called Jean Thiel, who discovered it in 1749, but a few years later, Messier also noted it. In fact, these are the most common galaxies in the whole universe, but we tend not to think about them that much, partly because if you were producing a nice book of pretty pictures of galaxies, they're not the ones you'd pick, because they're small and not very interesting to look at. But also because actually you can't see them very far away. We can see these dwarf companion galaxies to the Milky Way and to the Andromeda galaxy and to a few nearby galaxies. But actually, learning anything much about them when they're further away than that, they're so small and faint that we just don't see them usually. It's a classified as an elliptical galaxy. In fact, it was the first elliptical galaxy that was really classified. But it's unusual as an elliptical galaxy because it's actually a compact elliptical galaxy. In other words, it's very centrally concentrated in its light. And so we still haven't quite figured out why it looks so peculiar, why it has this very compact nature to it. And it seems likely that it was once a bigger galaxy, and it's sort of in the process of being cannibalized by the Andromeda galaxy, actually being eaten by the Andromeda galaxy. And so what we're seeing is sort of the undigested part, the bit that hasn't been tidally ripped away from its main body so far. Either it was once a much bigger elliptical galaxy that has successively had all its outer parts ripped away, and all that's left is the bit that was left in the middle, or alternatively, it could have been a spiral galaxy that's lost all its disk. I think we're sort of converging on the second idea, that actually it was once upon a time a spiral galaxy. And part of the reason we know that is M32 has a black hole in the middle of it, like most galaxies do. And there's a fairly tight relationship between how big the black hole is and how big the spheroidal bit of the galaxy was. And so, of course, if this was once a giant elliptical galaxy, we'd expect it to have a very big black hole in the middle. Actually, the mass of the black hole is just the mass you'd expect for the current sort of spheroidal collection of stars around it. And that means that whatever was ripped away wasn't more of the spheroidal component. It wasn't a big elliptical galaxy. So probably once upon a time it was a disk galaxy with its roidal bulge in the middle with a moderate sized black hole in the middle of that. The disk has all been ripped away and all we're left with now is this roidal bulge with a black hole in the middle. What did M32 do wrong to get eaten by Andromeda? Did it, just... it went too close, fundamentally, and so what happens as you venture too close to a big galaxy, these tidal forces get stronger and stronger, and so more and more of the material gets ripped away. This particular class of galaxy is actually pretty unusual, and it's thought that probably the reason why it's unusual is we've caught this galaxy at an unusual stage in its life, that it's sort of been mostly digested, but there's still this bit left in the middle. And if we came back in a billion years' time, probably that bit in the middle would have gone as well. So the reason why this particular kind of compact elliptical galaxy is thought to be quite unusual is just because it's an unusual phase of the, star's life, of the galaxy's life which doesn't last very long.